Hello and welcome to episode 18 of Let's Play the Banner Saga. We're about to enter battle, so here we go. Wow, um, this does complicate things a little bit. I'm not even sure if I should put people here. I guess this is where the archers are better. to get her over here then. Like this. We won't be able to do the first blow, probably. That one. So we can just go uh, hit this guy really hard without any problem. And Hacken can go there. So. We'll be using two willpower. Okay. Oh, I blocked the road. Not like this. Thank you. 
can hit for five or impale knock back two tiles target bleeds one string move Break for five. Yeah, let's just hit this guy real hard first. Oh, reinforcements. Great. You must keep the dredge away. <laughs> nice one. Um. Shoot this guy. We cannot shoot this guy. But his armor is broken, right? So why can't we puncture him? He's got tremble, so we need to get rid of that guy. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's worth using our willpower for. This is the pushback, right? Break. No, let's bring the pain. Let's break damage. Oh, we can't kill this guy now. I do is gonna be in range for hacking. I can not really protect Luden either. Uh, got Tempest right. Got Sundering Impact as well. If I go here, then I open up hacking for attacks. Let's just get rid of this guy.
maybe I should just go past. should work if we can clear away the dredge. I can't read that fast. The hell? But don't he has... doesn't he have... Um, this passive ability that all dredge has? Heavy impact, yeah. No. Why can I not target this guy? So weird. Well, that's bad. I meant looting you in the way. This is holding up, so that's good. Uh, we can get there, I think, right? So he does have heavy impact, so he's gonna uh, trickle down. you over here maybe so far the knockback thing hasn't really worked out for us as much um, oh 
Alright. We got two willpower, we can get some more. Thread the needle, that's five spaces as well. I should have moved in. Well, then we would have hit hack and as well, so maybe not. Never mind. Juno walks onto the floating land, cradling a, a kid goat in one arm. What? Floating land, cradling a kid goat in one arm. She looks strained, be beckons the families to follow. You shout for everyone to start moving, but the fighters and the clansmen alike remain motionless. Large chunks of earth bobbling in mid-air like ships at the sea has everyone unsettled. Finally, Ivor takes the reins of the yaks loaded with the supply cart and walks out onto the first floating stone. It supports the load without issue. We go this way, or the dredge kill us all. His words are punctuated by slinger stones thudding into the ground only feet away. Men pick up their children and start running. The caravan animals squeak and bleed into the frenzy. Varl push through the crowd while others fight, fight to follow in their wake. The frightened mob tramples a few and knocks a couple more from the ledge before everyone is strangly, strangely pacified. Even you feel a sense of calm settle your nerves. The wounded and elderly struggle to make it onto the floating rocks, while fear of the bridge paralyzes the legs of others. The dredge gives chase, crossing onto the bridge without hesitation. Uh, find lines of dredge to dispatch with your arrows. Three dredge grunts fall back as your arrows pass through them, their armor splinters wounding others around them. A few more lined up shots and the dredge slow their pursuit. The last of the clansmen make it on the ledge on the bridge moving past you. Only dredge are left in your caravan's wake. 
You watch as the floating stones nearest the land tremble and drop back into the chasm, taking all standing there with them. The sight is terrifying, but you turn and urge the others to keep moving forward. <coughs> Holy crap, Ivan. That's crazy. Ivan is growing visibly weaker. Meanwhile, many in the caravan are stunned by witnessing family members fall to their deaths. The effect is spreading. Uh, rip a weeping man away from the falling edge. Ask Ivan how you can help him. Run to the back and push people forward. Let's ask Ivan who, how we can help him. No, don't disturb him, Juna says. But Ivan's concentration wavers as he looks towards you. The bridge rumbles and the large section falls away, taking with it a number of families and fighters. Damn it. Bad choice. Mistakes were made! The stones behind the caravan are falling faster than the rising ones in front. The rear clansmen are pushing forward in panic. Bulwark shouts, knock some of these people over the edge before we all go down. People gasp and flee from him. You are carrying too much, Ivor says. We gotta get rid of something before that mender drops us all into the depths. They look around and see only people, food and the massive cart the ravens are hauling. Only two of those are an option. What is the cart of the ravens? If we do that, then we have another enemy. Done more food? The ones closest to the supplies look at you bewildered. We won't need food if we don't make it across your shot. Slowly, a couple of carts are unhitched and shoved over the edge. Ivan's relief is almost instant and the bridge extends, giving everyone more room and time to move. Probably gonna have to do that one other time. One more time, probably. Just a bit further, Ivan. <laughs> Ivan screams, scream chills you as it echoes of the cliff of a mere hundred yards away. Again, the bridge shakes, but you stay together. When Juno looks at you, her lips are trembling. This is killing him, she says, and I won't let that happen. Her tone is dark and cold. What's the alternative? She says nothing but looks towards the rear of the caravan. Governor Ruga and many others from Borsgard are there. Not to silently approve dropping the rear of the caravan. Haha. <laughs> uh, so. That's a really big decision. Not to silently approve dropping the rear of the caravan. The Valka returns to Ivan's side. As soon screams erupt from behind you. You turn in time to see people falling away and Raga pulled to safely by one of his guards. As the rest of the caravan pushes forward in fear, the governor glances at you with suspicion. I guess we did make another enemy.
What's your step? I believe we made it across that chasm. Now we find what's left of Ormstalur. Once a great trade town at the fork of the Ormsau River. How many lives must have been lost here? From the massive world to the youngest human children, everyone is sapped from crossing the chasm. Uh, tents are loosely strung up and gear is thrown on the ground as everyone falls asleep. You manage to post a few guards out of habit before sinking down against the crate, wrapped your cloak, wrapping your cloak around you and closing your eyes. Your chest aches as it is if it, from a wasp sting. Feeling around you, around for the cause of it, you look down between your leathery, grey fingers running over a red stone breastplate. Gasping, you open your eyes to find your cloak still wrapped around you, no stone armor underneath. The caravan is still asleep, snoring more prevalent than usual. You're, using, you're able to drift off for a bit, more rest before facing the task of the new day. Let's have a look at the heroes. So those are our heavy hitters. Our tanks are injured. Percy is also a warhawk. Knock back on strength. Two will per kill, one strength. Ooh. Could promote Chroma. What is he? What is he using? Nothing at the moment. Tempest or Sundering Impact. I think we'll go on with Tempest. And we only have one real tank though. Oh, I thought we would be able to upgrade Mogger. Oh, it's Grist that we can upgrade, right? For seven. Not back on strength. Twenty percent crit chance, looting. 
nine to upgrade the hammer. It doesn't have a lot of break. So let's do that and on more armor. Is Ivan back? No, Ivan is out of the group. Let's just buff. All right, we got. Oh, we actually have four, three tanks, three tanks, three DPS. I'm really not sure if I should be investing in these archers because. That puncture sting, sting doesn't seem to work. I mean, Eric. Oh, we can give willpower to people. At the moment, we never had a situation where we had, we didn't have enough willpower. I feel. So, uh, okay, I'm investing in one spearman at least. Maybe we should invest in one more archer. You make your way across the broken bones of the former trade town, curious as to what's inside the building, which is still somewhat intact. The structure groans as you enter and you hear yourself whispering, this isn't worth it. After a squeak survey of, quick survey of the room, only two things stand out, a stone with a strange etching resting on the broken mantle and footprints in the dust near the small door in the wall. A gust of wind blows up from the chasm and the whole building creaks. I know you're there, I'm here to help. The small door creaks open and the child looks at you. Come here, you say, this place isn't safe. The child seems to trust you and tiptoes towards you. Others begin flinging out, filing out, carefully choosing their steps. Each person is carrying a bag of food. As you're leaving the precarious structure, the small child runs back in and grabs the stone of the mantle, handling, handling, handing it to you while you, with a smile. More improved. We gain another item. Yokul Haller. Plus two all talents. What does that mean?
Hold on, hold on, hold on. Knock back on strength plus one strength. That's probably what we should give to Luden then. However, still has that one. 20% crit chance. Fifteen to promote him even further. Yeah, I don't know what that means, plus two L talents. Let's have a chat with Ivor. Ivor stands historically behind by Ivan's pallet watching the unconscious Mender's breeding. It took a lot out of him. I never want him doing something like that again. I'll let you I'll let you tell that to the man who can pull lightning from the sky and lift rocks from to tor to form bridges. Impressive every strain might be, you notice how the use of power taxed the Mender. He looks older. Where's Juno? I figured she'd be by Ivan's side. Just as Ivor shrugs, Odliff abruptly enters the room. Good, you're here. It's the Ravens. They're trying to leave, and some of our people want to go with them. Uh, what? Why? We nearly went over a waterfall in ships and lost a lot of people following some Valka across floating rocks. I'm not saying any of that is your fault. But people are scared. If they've made up their mind to go, they'll leave whenever you're not looking. And the raisin have been hoarding supplies this whole time. They're trying to take off with them. Juno and Haken, uh, Haken are trying to talk sense to Bulwark, so it's desperate. As you make your way to the door, you turn to look at Ivor. Go. The people should see you handle something like this without me around. Missing more than your horns. Stand down, you son of a god! So we're fighting these guys no matter what. So what does that do? Clansmen chatter as Juno converses with the day's bulwarks quite widely. Hakon grabs your attention. Get ready for a confusing conversation. He motions to Ursa, one of Prince Luden's bodyguards, who is whipping her pitch-covered hand with a rag on her way over to you. Clever trick, which this time... You varl just too easy. However, you knew what to do. 
Thank you. Why are Vars so afraid? Yeah, let's thank her. You don't have to be a scholar to learn what others fear, girl. She gives you a curt smile before returning to the prince's tent. Strange, that one. Strange is how much effort it took to stop Bulwark. I suppose no one told you he's a berserk. Probably the last one of his kind after Einertoft. The Val King laughs at your blank expression. Berserks lose themselves in the fight. They're as strong as cold bears, just as wild, hard to save their friend or foe in a fight. King Hacken, do you... Enough with the king formalities. I've been Hacken before your mama... Before <laughs> your ama was alive. And it works just fine. Sorry, Hacken. Uh, do you mind telling me why two war leaders just tried to kill each other? I wasn't going to let him take our supplies without a fight. Caught him trying to take off with supplies he took away. Couldn't let it happen. A cool anger glistens in Hacken's eyes when he looks at Bulwark. Why does he want to leave? Says you've been bad luck ever since arriving at Borsgard. I can't say I blame him for that. The two of you actually laugh for a moment. I bet his main reason for leaving is just to be in charge again, run jobs and keep his ravens in line. Like most of us, he's looking for something normal to grab onto. Whatever his reasons, I hate that some of us are going with him. We've done what we can for them. Ooh, so we can even be generous, give them nothing, or just a little bit. What is it going to give us when we're being generous? It's just going to upset our group. If we give a little, then what is the benefit, the downside of that? That we might end up in another fight? Maybe we'll run into them at some point again and need their help. They did try to run off with stuff. I mean, can't really reward bad behavior, right? <laughs> so we're gonna give her, give them just a couple of days worth of supplies. You've got a lot of mouths to feed. The ravens can make do with a couple of days of food and live with the land afterwards. Oh, I didn't realize you can. <laughs> That's the first thing I noticed then. That sounds about right. You've got a better head than me for these things. Now let's see what we can find in what's left of this place. Chapter 9. Cast the horn into the air. Oh, we switched to Bulwark. Really? Oh, I did not expect that at all. <laughs> you glare at the clansmen and while settled among the ruins of Armsdaler and feel the rumbling growl in your chest. Everyone will be ready to leave as soon as you start walking north. I won't fall for that stupid fire trick again. Volka ignores your comment. The new members from the other caravan will probably need a beating or two. 
think it was stupid of me to challenge Hakon. Not really my place to say. Since when has that stopped you? The shield maiden grins. We could, have, we could have at least waited to hear their plans first, then decided. Their plans almost took us over a fun waterfall. That waterfall surprised us all, of course. It will be nice to be on our own again. We will make it to Bindle. Bindle get a job and things get back to normal we always survive and what about all those dredge if they make it across the chasm chasm it will be war war has always been good for business polka smirks but your but her face hardens as juno's approaches bulver could i have a word with you haven't you said enough I'll hear her out. Well, I won't. I'll finish the packing. The two of you watch Falka stomp off, but not too far. She's protective of you. Get on with it. I know your ravens need work. Without working coin, that banner of yours is worthless. You step towards her, towering above the tall Valka, though she stands resolute. In Boerskard, we made an arrangement for you to protect this large card until we were away from the dredge threat. There across the damn chasm, that job is done. Agreed, but the cart you've been hauling has become too troublesome. It needs to be sunk into the deepest waters around. You grunt in disgust. Falka secrets. You would turn down the Mendes Council's coin? What's in the cart? If you needed to know, I would have told you. Suffice to say you have a Valka's Ode for a great deal of coin once you have sunk that card. The Blue River Northwest of Bindle is my suggestion. And if I just leave it in the woods somewhere, I will know, as will the other Valka. Besides, the ravens always finish their jobs. That reputation means everything to you. You growl, but she's right. Fine, the raven's oath will be done. Juno nods and walks away. Volca watches her leave and returns to your side. Now what? Now we have a job. Alright, let's stop here. Alright, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.